Hey, welcome to the Presbyterian Church of Lawrenceville Online. My name is Kyle and I'm one of the pastors here at the church. Whether you're a longtime member or friend of our congregation or a first time guest with us, we are so glad that you are joined, have joined us for worship this morning. 
uh, we're online. Uh, and so I encourage you to take advantage of that chat feature there to the right of your screen. Uh, if you're viewing this service on a mobile device, that chat feature will be down below. Someone from our church will be online during our live stream looking to engage with you. If you have any comments or concerns, prayer requests or needs, uh, we do encourage you to share those with us. Uh, we'll try to respond to all of those as they come in. You can use that chat feature for just such a thing. Uh, if you'd like, uh, you can also email any requests to our Associate for Pastoral Care Ministries, uh, Jill Cefeli. Uh, know that we continue to pray with and for one another. Uh, if you're sharing requests in the comments publicly, uh, just a reminder, please don't include last names uh, so that we can maintain one another's privacy. Engage with this service. Uh, use uh, the Facebook reactions as the service goes. Consider sharing your comments throughout the service. Like this post or share our video on Facebook. Even you might consider starting a watch party. It's never been easier to invite your friends and your family members to church. And so we encourage you uh, to do that. Also, sing loudly. All of the words to the songs that we'll include in our worship service will be there on the screen for you. So sing like nobody's watching. All right. And finally, several of you have asked about how you might support PCOL during these times. Uh, and it's never been easier to do that. We encourage you to visit our website, pclawrenceville.org. And there at the top right-hand corner of the webpage, you'll see a blue button labeled Donate. Go ahead and click there and you can give a contribution to our church. Whether you're watching us live or you're catching up with us later in the week on Facebook or YouTube, we are so glad that you've decided to join us. And we look forward to worshiping God together. Boy, it is always tough following that guy, right? If you laughed at that joke, put an emoji in the comments. Good morning and welcome again to the Presbyterian Church of Lawrenceville. We are glad that you are here with us for worship. As we get started, we have a few announcements to share with you. The first is that if you've not done so already, we encourage you to download the order of worship for this morning's worship service. Not only will that allow you to follow along and participate with us in worship. Uh, but there are so many announcements uh, in that document about things that are happening in the life and ministry of the church. Even though we are still very much in the middle of a pandemic, uh, there are a number of things happening here. And we'd love to have you uh, involved. So please download that document. The link, as I mentioned, should be there in the chat on Facebook or in Zoom. Also, I'd like to remind you that tonight, uh, is Worship in a New Key at 5 o'clock. We'll meet on Zoom. You can find that link uh, either on our Worship in a New Key Facebook page or we'll share it later this afternoon as well on our PCOL page. Uh, and we're going to follow up this morning's conversation uh, through discussion, prayer, music, poetry, artwork. Uh, and so we'd love to have you join us, 5 o'clock on Zoom. Look for that link on Facebook. Uh, some of you participated this past week in our first uh, Latin study series that the Adult Education Committee has put together called Take It to the Lord in Prayer. Uh, we're meeting again this week for the second session of that. If you missed the first week, that's okay. You can join uh, this week. Uh, we're exploring together different forms and styles of prayer. Uh, this week, Lorraine Huckler will lead us uh, in meditative prayer using prompts without words. Uh, so please join us. The Zoom link will be there in the chat for you, and we'll meet Wednesday at 7 to 7.30, just a half hour. We hope that you will join us for that. Also coming up, maybe you've seen on Facebook, we've got a Zoom trivia night coming up. It promises to be a lot of fun. Uh, DJ Dave is going to lead us. Dave Hoffel is going to lead us. Uh, MC that event for us. You can register online. Uh, there's information on our website. There's information on Facebook. The link is there in the chat. You can register as an individual or as a team. Uh, it'll be a great time to gather, to learn some new things, to have fun, to maybe meet some new people. 
And we're going to use that as an opportunity to raise money throughout the night uh, to support our mission fund here at the church. Uh, so we'd love to have you join us. Um, and also, why not share that link on Facebook? If you come across it, share it with your friends. Invite others to join you. It promises to be a good time. This is a bit of a youth ministry announcement. Next Sunday, March 7th, uh, we're going to begin thinking about Youth Sunday, which is coming up in April. Uh, So any students who would like to participate in Youth Sunday, and we hope that many will, are invited to join us on Zoom at 6.30. Again, next Sunday, March 7th. The Zoom link there will be provided for you in the chat. Uh, Also, if you get our youth ministry emails, uh, it will be in that email, or you can always call or text me uh, for that information. But any student who's interested in participating in Youth Sunday, we're going to have a big brainstorming session next Sunday evening, and we hope that you'll join us for that. Similarly, next Sunday, during the morning worship hours, I believe 9.30 to 11.30, Alicia Morrison will be outside the south entrance handing out our uh, children's ministry Sunday school packages. Uh, So please feel free to drop by uh, any time during that to pick up your, your Sunday school bag. Many of you have reached out to the church, uh, and many of you maybe haven't, but had noticed that the governor mentioned that houses of worship in New Jersey are allowed to operate at 50% capacity in person. Know that we are aware of that change, uh, and our returning to in-person advisories group is planning to meet this week uh, to talk about that, what that might look like for us, what are the implications. Uh, So we invite you to stay tuned for more information as we continue to process Uh, and weigh all the facts and uh, implications for us as a congregation. Uh, So we'll have some more announcements on that in the coming weeks. Um, I would like to, uh, before we get there, uh, each week we've tried uh, to lift up our gratitude for members and friends of our congregation, those who are doing small or big things around the church, Uh, as a way of expressing our gratitude not only for them, but for the blessing of this community. Uh, The folks that I'd like to thank this morning are maybe, maybe they're functioning behind the scenes, and sometimes they're not quite so behind the scenes, but I'd like to lift up uh, John Calkins and Matt Kaufman, two of our uh, musicians here at the church, who have been working, um, gosh, tirelessly, I don't think that's an overstatement to say, to put together Uh, The music that we have uh, in our worship service, the videos, the pre-recorded things, I've noticed that the camera is now on John. You can't tell how red he is because of his mask, but we want to really embarrass him because not only are we grateful for him and Matthew and all the work that they do, but unfortunately, uh, John has uh, taken a position with another congregation as a music director and won't be with us uh, after March 14th, won't be with us on Sunday mornings anymore. Uh, And so after what, this is your 11th year here? So after 10 years, he's in his 11th year, he is going to be moving on. And so we uh, will miss you, John, for sure. Uh, We're going to give him a send-off on the 14th in worship and express our gratitude to him specifically. Um, But thank you to Matthew and to John for all of the work that you do. Uh, Our worship uh, just wouldn't be possible. This year wouldn't be possible without you. And so we are grateful to you and to all of our musicians. I think, yeah, we could clap. There are very few of us here in the building, so it doesn't sound that uh, impressive, but know that we're all clapping uh, in our hearts and in our homes. Um, In just a moment, uh, before we have our intro, we're going to hear another uh, conversation between Jeff and Pastor Luke about the work that Pastor Luke is doing in Haiti. Uh, For those of you who have been worshiping with us for any amount of time, you know that February here at PCOL is Haiti Mission Month, uh, where we celebrate the work, the ministry, and the partnership that we have with Pastor Luke and with Harmony Ministries. Last week, we received a special offering to support them, uh, but it's not too late. If you were not able to make a donation to that, you can still do that uh, today or any day uh, this week. The link to do that will be there in the chat on Facebook and on Zoom. Um, But before we get to that special announcement, I also want to remind you that immediately following worship today, there is a uh, called special meeting of the corporation, and I want to read the formal uh, announcement for that meeting. A brief special meeting of the corporation will be held on Sunday, this morning, February 28th, after worship for the purpose of voting on nominations to fill one trustee unexpired term and one auditing committee unexpired term. It's signed Nicole Gray, president of the trustees, and David Sung, clerk of session. So if you're joining us for worship this morning on Zoom, stay where you are. If you're here with us on Facebook at the end of the worship service, 
There will be a link uh, there in the chat. Go ahead and click that and jump over and join us on Zoom. It will be a very brief meeting. Now here's a conversation between Jeff and Pastor Luke. Pastor Luke, tell us a little bit about the, the, the needs that you have currently and in the future for your ministry. Well, the need, uh, you know, for the, for the ministry uh, in, the, in the future, first of all, uh, we, we have to really uh, think about uh, Thomas Church, you know, to rebuild because it's the wolf and the wall are cracking. So that's one of the needs. And also the bus pick up to pick up the people, you know, in different in different part of um, Port au Prince that uh, for them to really come to to the service on Sundays. It sounds like one of the big priorities is this bus that we're hoping actually I think to ship over to Haiti. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, and and how is the church in Leo gone? Uh, is there reconstruction happening there? Uh, the the reconstruction is going on right now. And uh, so we will be sending uh, a video of the construction to you. That's great. So you can see how, how far we, we, we are with the construction. And how about the schools at the various ministry sites? How are they doing, Pastor Luke? The, the schools in the various uh, sites, they are really in big numbers, many children. And then Port au Prince School, we have uh, over 300 children. And the sponsor of student, um, the cost for a student for a year is how much, Pastor Luke? 50 to 55. So it's amazing yeah. that $50, $55 will provide an education for a student for an entire year. Uh, yes. Beyond the, the general mission, uh, Haiti mission, offering, you can designate a gift uh, to sponsor a student. And uh, one student, $50, uh, will provide the entire year's education. So, um, well, Pastor Luke, thank you. Is anything else uh, before we end here that you want to say about um, how things are going or, or what you uh, hope to see in the future? Uh, really, uh, I really like, you know, for in the future to really keep on uh, the partnership, uh, you know, with Lawrenceville, who's been really a big help, a uh, great support, you know, coming your way to really help us uh, with the with the field of Haiti to keep uh, the ministry going. So we appreciate everything that uh, you and the congregation uh, has been uh, doing for us to keep us uh, <laughs> to keep us going. Yeah, so well, we give to God for you and for the ministry that you're doing, Pastor Luke, and the partnership that we've had for over two decades. It's pretty amazing. Uh, yes, sir. And, uh, and we, we love everybody at Lawrenceville Church. And, uh, and I believe God will continue to use you and I to bring uh, his people into his kingdom. Amen. Well, thanks for spending some time with me, Pastor Luke. God bless you. God bless you, my pastor. Oh. Uh -huh.
Friends, today in worship, we will be reminded that again and again we are called to listen. This is part of our invitation as people of faith, not only to speak, to pray, and to sing, but to listen. But listening is hard, isn't it? Especially when we don't know what we are listening for or agree with what we are listening to. Listening is hard. And so as we gather ourselves for worship this morning, I want to invite you to join me in a kind of kinesthetic call to worship as I prompt you, embodying our invitation to listen. And so, family of faith, I invite you to close your eyes. I invite you to rest your feet on the floor beneath you. Release any tension that you are holding in your jaw, your neck, your shoulders, your hands, your legs, your feet. Take a deep breath in and slowly let it out. The Hebrew word for breath, ruach, is the same word for spirit, the Holy Spirit. And so as you breathe, imagine that it is God who is filling up your lungs with energy, with love. Trust that God is as close as your very breath. Now I invite you to still your mind. Are we back? We're back. I'm, I'm getting the, the hand gestures that we're back online. I apologize uh, for that brief interruption. Uh, it seems our internet service sort of just cut out. Uh, so hopefully you're with us. It looks like our numbers are coming back, the live stream. Uh, I'm going to suggest as a way of cheating the Facebook algorithm, if you're with us, go ahead and put a thumbs up in the, the comments. Uh, not only are we building engagement, but we know that you're with us. All right. Uh, I think we were interrupted somewhere in the call to worship as we were taking a chance uh, to quiet ourselves, uh, to listen to our breath, to trust that God, uh, that same word for breath in Hebrew and in Greek, it's that same word for spirit, the Holy Spirit, that God is as close to us as our breath. And so again and again, as we are called to listen, we trust that God is with us. And so this morning, let us worship God together.
Please join me in prayer. Often the first step to change is listening. We have to listen to those we've hurt. We have to listen to creation as she cries. We have to listen to the voice of the oppressed if we ever hope to make things right. So today, as we begin our prayer of adoration and confession, we will start with a moment of silence, a moment to listen, and then we will pray together, trusting that God is always listening to us and that God listens with love. So let us confess silently and then together. Listening God, we thank you for even though we mess up time and again, you love us. And again and again, you invite us to listen, to experience your love and to love others. Take what is closed in us and open it. Take what is distracted in us and settle it. Take what is hurting in us and hold it. Take any and all parts of us that create distance from you. For we are like Peter, O oh God. We argue what we don't know. We fear what we cannot see. And we almost always speak sooner than we listen. So open us, settle us, hold us, and forgive us. We long to hear you more clearly. We long to know you more fully. With hope we pray and with gratitude we confess. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we confess with gratitude because we know that God has already heard and forgiven us. No matter what we have done or left undone, we are held in God's hand. So rest in this good news. God invites us in. God meets us where we are. God hears our prayers. God forgives us. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, healed, set free, and redeemed. Alleluia. Amen. Well, hello, boys and girls out there. I know some of you are watching with us, and some of you may be watching later on with us, and so I wanted to take a little time uh, to talk with you. And first thing I want to do is I want to ask you a question, and I want to tell you something that I wonder about sometimes. What would it be like if we were perfect? You ever think about that? What would it be like if we did everything right and never made a mistake. We got A's on all our tests in school, and uh, we always helped with the dishes without being asked. We did, did everything that our parents or the people taking care of us asked us to do. What, what, if, what would it be like if we were perfect and never made a mistake? Think about that just for a minute. I'm going to talk, though, uh, right now about the Bible story that we're going to be thinking about and, and that Kyle is going to be talking about in just a minute. It's a story where Peter makes a mistake. Um, Jesus was teaching the disciples about how he had to go to Jerusalem, the big city in that area at the time, and that he would have to be arrested by really mean people, and they would hurt him, and they would put him on a cross, and he would die. And Peter said, no, that can never happen. Because, you see, Peter thought that Jesus was going to be president. Well, they didn't have president back then, but king, sort of the same thing as the president. You're going to be president, and you're going to fix everything because you're the son of God. And Jesus did something. There's a fancy word that describes what Jesus did. Uh, it's, it's a cool word to say. He rebuked him. Isn't that a great word to say? It sort of rolls off the tongue. Maybe you want to say it too. He rebuked him. He rebuked him. That's a fancy word for saying he corrected him. He said, you're wrong. You're making a mistake. This is what I have to do. I have to go to Jerusalem and mean people will arrest me and they will put me on a cross and I will be killed. But I'll rise again in three days. So... You know, back to this question, what if we never made any mistakes? What if we were perfect? I think about how 
When I was a kid, and even now, I make lots of mistakes, but when I was a, a child, I knew my parents loved me when I made mistakes because they would forgive me. And also, I learned from the mistakes that I made. And I think that's one of the things that God does for us, is help us learn. God helps us learn from our mistakes. And we know that we're loved through God's forgiveness of us. But we learn from our mistakes. So Peter, looking back at that moment when Jesus rebuked him, corrected him, uh, learned something later on because he understood later on what Jesus was talking about. And he learned from his mistake He made other mistakes, too, that he learned from. But that's the good news, is that we all make mistakes. And that's what's beautiful about being a human person, is that we make mistakes, and God forgives us. And through that, we learn about what it means to be a person, and we learn about who God is, because we make mistakes, and we're not perfect. So think about that. Maybe you want to talk with your whole family around the dinner table sometime today about that idea. Thanks for spending some time with me. God bless you. This morning's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John. Chapter 8, beginning in verse 31 and going to verse 38. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, and that he would be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and that he would be killed. And after three days, he would rise again. He said all of this quite openly. And Peter took him aside, and he began to rebuke Jesus. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. And he said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Where are you going? Indeed, what can they give in what? return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and with the, true, with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, in this season of Lent, again and again, teach us to listen. Teach us to listen for your word. Teach us to listen for your Holy Spirit. Teach us to listen to one another. This morning, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts Reflect that listening and bring glory and honor to you. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we get started this morning, I want to say a few things about our Lenten theme. Jeff mentioned it last week. For those of you who joined us, it's again and again a Lenten refrain. In Lent, we are reminded again and again that suffering and brokenness find us. We doubt again. We lament again. We mess up again. Again and again, the story of Jesus' death on the cross repeats. Every time lives are taken unjustly, every time the powerful choose corruption and violence, 
Every time individuals forget how to love again and again. And yet in the midst of our lives, in the midst of the chaos of our lives, God offers us a sacred refrain. I choose you. I love you. I will lead you to repair. Last week we heard in our scripture reading the story of Jesus' baptism from Mark chapter 1 before he was led out into the wilderness to be tempted. That 40 days, right, that is the model for the season of Lent. It's important to note that in that text, God meets Jesus at the Jordan. God meets Jesus before his Lent in the wilderness. God meets Jesus before Jesus comes back proclaiming the good news to all people. God meets Jesus before he does anything at all. And there on the banks of the Jordan River, Jesus is reminded that he is God's beloved. Again and again, God meets us at the edge of the river in those liminal spaces in our lives at the start of something new and right here at the beginning of the season of Lent and reminds us of what is elemental, what is foundational to who we are, that you and I are beloved children of God. Now, that's not what Jeff preached on last week. And like any good colleague, uh, not only did I give him a bit of a hard time, but I found a way to work it into my sermon today. But, joking aside, if you worshipped with us last week, you'll know that Jeff raised some really important points about the again and again nature of evil that I think are especially relevant for us if we are to take serious this journey through the season of Lent. Jeff pointed out that one of the tricks of evil is to make us think that it exists out there, beyond ourselves, that it's not a part of creation and it's certainly not a part of me. He suggested that the way that we as human beings deal with the problem of evil is to externalize it, right? To place the blame on something else or probably worse and more often someone else. It's their fault. And in that way, we never actually have to deal with our own sin. And yet this season in the life of the church has always been about being fully honest, hasn't it? Being fully honest with ourselves and with one another and with God. And so in order to do that, we have to, we have to wrestle with the tension of knowing that we are God's beloved children while also understanding That line between good and evil isn't a line between us and them, but rather it's a line that runs directly through each one of us. And perhaps that's the hard truth that we don't want to hear. Perhaps that's why Lent gets a bad rap at times, right? Because none of us want to confront our own sin and brokenness. I certainly don't. It's uncomfortable. We like hearing that God loves us, but we'd rather ignore those dark parts of ourselves that need to be confronted, that need to be challenged, and that need to be changed. And yet, isn't that what Lent is about? In our scripture reading this morning, right off the bat, we have a familiar character from last week that I think I'd be remiss not to point out, and I wonder if you caught it. Satan. Satan shows up again in this text when Peter rebukes Jesus. Jesus responds, get behind me, Satan. Now, on a side note, Though I think we all long to be more like Jesus, I can vouch that this is probably not something that you should say to your spouse or to your parents or to your teachers. It never goes over well. Get behind me, Satan. What on earth is happening here? 
Now, to understand this passage better, I think we have to understand what comes right before it, especially here in Mark's gospel. It's important. Beginning in verse 27, which we didn't read, uh, which unfortunately the lectionary doesn't include this week, Jesus asks his disciples, hey, what's the word on the street? Who do people say that I am? And so his disciples respond, right? They say, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah or uh, one of the other prophets. Uh, There's that guy down the road that keeps calling you Joseph. But then Jesus responds to his disciples and he says, but who do you say that I am? And in one of his finer moments, Peter responds, you are the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. Now we know what comes next, right? Or at least we think we do. Jesus responds favorably, giving Simon the name Peter and says, upon this rock, because Peter means rock, I will build my church. Upon this confession of faith, I will build my church. This will be the cornerstone to my church. But that is not the case here in Mark's gospel. Instead, verse 30 says that Jesus sternly, sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Peter says, you're the Messiah, and Jesus says, okay, be quiet. Then Jesus goes on to say right here in our reading that the Son of Man must suffer and be rejected before being killed at the hands of the religious and political authorities. And so Peter pulls him aside and rebukes him. That can't be right, Jesus. Am I hearing you correctly? I thought you just said that you were going to suffer and be rejected and that you were going to die. That doesn't make sense. You are the Messiah. You are the Christ. You're the anointed one. Right In the Jewish imagination at that time, the notion of the Messiah was one who would bring about the full restoration to Israel. I think we we know that, and Jeff mentioned that this morning uh, in our time with children. Most often, not always, but most often this was understood through the lens of royal triumph, right? It would be a king. Kings were anointed. Right? The anointed one. If Jesus is the anointed one, surely he would be a king. In the Old Testament, King David was considered the Messiah, the anointed one, who united the two kingdoms of Israel. And it was sort of those were the glory days of Israel's history. And the Messiah who is to come would be one like David, who would restore Israel to its former glory. Also in the Old Testament, King Cyrus of Persia is referred to as the Messiah. Perhaps you remember, right? He's the one that allowed God's people to return to Israel out of exile. So when Jesus foretells his death, it just doesn't fit within Peter's imagination. So he rebukes him. I want to pause there and go a little off script here, but I think it's interesting the amount of rebuking that's happening and the absence of real conversation. Right? I wonder how much does that sound like our culture today? Somebody has an opinion that is different from us, and rather than talking and listening, we rebuke one another. And so rather than listening to Jesus, rather than confronting this hard truth, Peter rebukes Jesus. Peter calls Jesus the Messiah, and yet Jesus responds, I am the Son of Man. That's a self-designated title for Jesus that appears often in the New Testament, but is also a callback to a vision in Daniel chapter 7. And it refers to the one uh, who is to come, who stands in contrast to the brutality of the political leaders at that time and represents God's true justice for all people. This is a social political statement that Jesus is making, and it's one that challenges the traditional understanding of what the Messiah would be, and it's one that advocates for all people, perhaps not just Israel. So Peter rebukes Jesus. Peter rebukes Jesus, I think, not necessarily because he's concerned for Jesus, 
Surely he doesn't want Jesus to die, but I think it's more likely the case that he is confronted with a hard truth. The hard truth that perhaps his understanding of the good news and of what it means to follow Jesus needed to be challenged. It needed to change. This new understanding of the gospel that Jesus is talking about requires self-examination and action from Peter. And that made Peter uncomfortable. Hard truths trouble the waters of our understanding, the Reverend Denise Anderson writes. And hard truths challenge our notions of what is real. And so Peter wants to ignore Jesus. He wants to quiet Jesus, and so he takes him aside, and he tries to quiet him down. And Jesus responds, how? Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Jesus responds that way, I think, because embodied in Peter's response is that again and again nature of evil that Jeff mentioned last week. It's that subtle, subconscious desire for comfort. It's that subtle, subconscious desire to maintain the status quo, to not make waves, especially if we are the ones in power, especially if we are the ones that benefit. It's that subtle, subconscious desire that says we've talked about racism enough, It's that subtle, subconscious desire that says, if you disagree with me, you are wrong. And Jesus says, that's not the gospel. Speaking to all of those gathered there now, not just Peter, not just his disciples, Jesus issues a call to discipleship. Anyone who would follow me must take up their cross. To be clear, this is not martyrdom, this is not a rally cry, this is not give me liberty or give me death, this is not live free or die, this is not Christian nationalism, and this is certainly not January 6th at the Capitol building. To all of those gathered there, those living under the occupation of the Roman Empire, the cross was a symbol of political oppression. And so Jesus reminds all of those gathered there, and Jesus reminds us that to follow Jesus is to stand in solidarity with all who are oppressed. It means considering the ways in which we, knowingly or not, contribute to that oppression. And it means working toward justice for all people. Again and again, this Lenten journey calls us to examine the things in which our hearts are invested. How important is comfort to us? Would we be willing to listen to hard truths and to be changed by them, even if it proves to be difficult? Or are we committed to the status quo? Because even though it may be imperfect, at least it's familiar. Again and again, we are implored to listen. We are called to listen as people of faith to one another and to God, especially when what we hear is unsettling. Our ears should burn, right, as opposed to dismissing them. I'll be the first to admit and to say that if the disciples, those who lived with and traveled with Jesus every single day, had something to learn then surely I don't have it all figured out. Lent is a time of reflection and repentance. Repentance means changing direction, and change requires humility. Again and again, we are called to listen. Taking up our cross, we bring all of ourselves to God in humility. To listen. Trusting that God will meet us along the way, despite the difficulties that we may face. Thanks be to God. Amen.
is calling through the whisper of the Spirit's deepest sighs, through the thrill of sudden beauties that can catch us by surprise. Flash of lightning, crash of thunder, hush of stillness, rush of wonder. God is calling, can you hear? God is calling, can you hear? God is calling through the voices of our neighbors' urgent prayers, through their longing for redemption and for rescue from despair. Place of hurt or face of needing, strident cry or silent bleeding, God is calling, can you hear? God is calling, can you hear? Let us pray. Holy God, again and again, we come to you with broken spirits and empty hands, hoping you might say something, a word that might heal us and enliven us hoping you might give us something to fill the emptiness. And again and again, whether we know or not, you do speak the words of hope that drop by drop, even in our sleep, provide healing and wisdom through your awesome grace. Again and again, like Peter, we fail to understand, and when we do, fail to do what's right. It's then that our consciences convict us and the scripture indicts us. And through that, in a way we'd never choose, by the mystery of your love, you teach us. You enable us to listen. You claim us even in the messy imprecision of navigating the life you gave. You give us hope amidst the sorrow. You who used death to give us life. Help us, O oh God, to be victors in the midst of strife, the joyful music of your gospel leading us onward. We pray this amidst the comical and chaotic of our every day, as the pandemic claims yet more lives, as we with languid minds and hearts sign on to Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting, watch TV until our eyes mist over. O oh God, give us life amidst the mess. We pray fervently that Christ might come into our hearts and show us the life that truly is life. Help us to be more than conquerors through him who loved us. Help us, God, to show your love not just by what we say but by what we do. We pray this for ourselves and even this is a prayer for others. Indeed, that Christ might live for others through us. And so, God, we do pray for this world. We pray for friends. We pray for those in need, for the broken. And we lift up all of these prayers in the silence. Holy One, teach us to pray, and not just with our lips, but with our lives. We lift up all of this as we pray those words of the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
You know, it occurs to me that we think of prayer as something we do with our lips, with our hearts, in our minds. Um, but prayer is also what we do with our lives and with our money, our treasure. Jesus said, where your treasure is, and that means money. Where your money is, there your heart will be. And so we depend on your treasure to do this work that we do together as a church community. And so I would invite you um, to practice generosity at this moment, to give a gift, or to consecrate the gift that you're giving. If you're giving regularly online, that's a super easy thing to do, to set up, so it happens automatically. But now we consecrate those gifts that we are about to give or have given for the sake of God's kingdom. So let us give and let us practice the kind of generosity that we know from God, our creator and redeemer and sustainer. Please give. Thank you. Señor, cante con novo, cantai ao Señor, como cante con novo, cantai ao Señor, como cante con novo, cantai ao Señor, cantai ao Señor. Porque Eli fez, Eli fez maravillas, porque Eli fez, Eli fez maravillas, porque Eli fez, Eli fez maravillas, contai a Señor, contai a Señor. Señor, bendicie vos nome, contai a Señor, bendicie vos nome, contai a Señor, bendicie vos nome, contai a Señor, contai a Señor. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures high and low. Praise God in Jesus, fully known, Creator, Word, and Spirit. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all that you are and all that you do. We give you thanks for your blessings in our lives and for your faithfulness to us, even when we are faithless. We offer up these offerings of our tithes and of our very lives this morning. We pray that in our giving we might become more generous people. We pray that in our giving we might learn to listen to you and to your Holy Spirit. Use these gifts, we pray, to further your kingdom and your ministry here in Lawrenceville and around the world. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. You know, every week I still kind of wait, like, I don't know if anyone's going to respond. <laughs> it's that nerve-wracking moment. Uh, we share a sign of Christ's peace with one another as a sign of our reconciliation uh, together. And so it's an important part of our worship, and I invite you to take a moment, if you're on Zoom, 
to unmute yourselves and to share that sign of Christ's peace with one another. If you're on Facebook, share a sign with those that you're gathered with or in the chat as together we sing our closing hymn. Hey, Don't forget to stop again. Peace be with you. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my soul shelter, and thou my high tower. Praise thou me heavenward, O power of my power. Friends, I'd like to remind you, uh, if you're with us on Facebook, uh, go ahead at the end of this service, click that link in the that'll be shared there in the chat. To jump over and join us on Zoom for our special meeting of our corporation. Um, to fill those two nominations. This service of worship has come to an end, and we go from this place to love and serve the Lord in all that we say and do. But let us not forget that it's not always about saying and doing, but sometimes we are called to listen. In fact, again and again we are called to listen to one another and to God. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit which binds each one of us together. Be with us this day and every day. Amen. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. to walk with me. Friends, we are gathered as a congregation. Uh, although we are apart, we are together in spirit. And so we gather for a corporate purpose, a uh, very simple purpose and a very short meeting. Uh, we're going to be gathering as a corporation to elect uh, a new trustee and to elect a member of uh, the auditing committee. So uh, I'm going to open us with prayer, then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Nicole Gray. <clears throat> I presume that, Nicole, you're with us on Zoom. Are you with us? Speak now. I'll maybe we'll give her a moment. Okay, good. Uh, and then the first thing you're going to want to do is ask the clerk to certify a quorum and then proceed with the business, but let's pray first. Holy One, we give thanks for the centuries-long ministry of this congregation, and we give thanks for your sustaining hand through the years. You have been our help in ages past, and you are our hope for years to come. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Redeemer. Amen. Okay, uh, the moderator of this meeting is Nicole Gray.
Should be Jim. Nicole, you can take both of them. Um, just ask if there are any nominations from the floor for either office, uh, and then a vote to close nominations, and then a vote to uh, accept. Vote in the chat. Vote aye or nay. Let our closing prayers, prayer simply be, let all the people say, amen. Let all the people unmute and say, amen. All right. Blessings, everybody.